With the introduction of new firmware and new editor for Hawk and Continuum products, and also the Osmos now, some of the videos I've created are a bit out of date, so I thought I'd update a few of them. This one will talk about macrocontrollers, how to set them, and how to use them in presets. The macrocontrollers, if you bring up an empty preset, you can see in the top left are these functions. There are six of them. They're now identical. In the past, they were called bespoke controllers, and before that, barrels and gens. Now all six of them are defined the same way. If you bring up some other preset, you'll see a lot of them have macrocontrollers defined. Some define all six. Some define less than that. You don't have to define them sequentially, but most times you'll see it done that way. And there are different graphics that are assigned to these that have special meaning as opposed to the default triangle. It's useful in a lot of cases, but now you're able to actually specify your own text within these controllers to make their use a lot more meaningful. We'll create a simple preset the sign preset, use X as a frequency on an oscillator, will send the output to SLSR with the standard Z function. There is zero on spectral balance, so there's no tone change on this oscillator. It's all a sine wave. Let's say I want to create a macrocontroller, and as I change that, I'll change the spectral balance. I'll change the timbre of this oscillator. Well, to do that, the first thing is to create the macrocontroller definition in the editor. You'll see in the editor now, there are these new codes that are used to define filtering options in the new system preset selection menu. We won't talk about those here, but I suggest when you edit a preset, leave these codes in place. There's also obviously a place for putting your name as an author in there. To add a macrocontroller, select some text, space, from that, and then select your macrocontroller number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, lowercase Roman numerals are used for this, so I'll say macrocontroller 1, put an equal sign in and give it a name, timbre, for example. And as the simplest case, that's all you need to do. I'll say done, I'll be out of the editor, and now I have this timbre control using the default triangle min to max. You'll see that when I change that in the editor, it goes from a MIDI value of 0 to 127. That's pretty much what all these controllers will do from the controller standpoint. Now I need to use this somehow in the matrix. I'll select the formula, A in this case. I'll put that on the spectral balance that will change the timbre of this oscillator, and now I want to select a range that this is going to go through, let's say 0.5. So this will, at its maximum point, be a little less than a sawtooth wave. Then on the third dot in W, select that, and you have two macrocontroller selection options, one that will range your macrocontroller from 0 to 1, and another one that will range it from 0 to 127. You also can set this to some other options, but as for macrocontroller, we're only considering these first two sets of options. Most of the time, you're going to set this a range of 0 to 1, because that will scale to the value that you have in W. So I'll select 0 to 1, and now you can see this in two ways. A little macrocontroller notification 1 is set on the W line. Also, if you look at your formula display, you can see a little 1 there as well. This allows you to quickly scan through all your formulas and see which ones use macrocontrollers. So now I can go back, and in the editor, I can adjust this. If I want to, I can use an external MIDI controller by sending CC12 for 1, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 respectively for the others. I can also assign a pedal to this using the pedal function. Here I can assign pedal 1 to this macrocontroller. So now if I have a pedal attached to my continuum, I can control this macrocontroller with that. If I want to use another pedal, I can assign that as well. Though I normally don't want to assign both pedals, so if I assign pedal 2, I will go back and assign pedal 1 back to something else. Just remember that the Continue Mini only supports one pedal, and the Egan Matrix module doesn't support pedals at all. I'll use the controller in the editor to do this now. So now when I play a note, at bottom where the value is 0, I'll get my original sign tone. And as I bring up the controller,
I'll change the value to the max that I've set, which is, in this case, 0.5. I can verify that by looking at the formula display, turn that on, select my formula, and then play something. And you'll see at its max setting, the value is 0.5. Of course, I could set it to the unity value, in which case this would move from 0 to 1. Let's look at our formula display. In certain cases, I don't want my formula to range in a positive direction. I might want it to go negative, so I can do that as well. In this case now, when I move my macrocontroller, the formula will go from 0 to minus 5. Well, you don't hear any change in the sound because the spectral balance needs to go from 0 to 1, so in effect it's stuck at its sine tone setting. That's the basic use case for most of these macrocontrollers. We'll set this back to 0.5 and we'll select the range 0 to 127. This now will scale from 0 to 127 as a multiplier, which means the value coming out of A from min to max will now go from 0 to about 64. Well, what it's doing is it's ranging this macrocontroller now to go from 0 to 127, but W is still set to a max of 0.5. So in effect, when I go to the maximum, it's half of that. So you can see using range 0 to 127, you have to be a little careful. This can be useful in certain cases in the matrix, but for the most part, almost every time you create a macrocontroller, you're going to be using range 0 to 1. A little more advanced use case for the macrocontroller is to use it in a blend. Let's create another formula, B. Well, let's set this to use macrocontroller 2. The primary will set persistence to zero, and the secondary will set a very high persistence. So now I'll define a second macrocontroller to equals sustain, which is similar to what persistence is going to create. And now what I'll do is I'll put an underscore, and then I'll put some text, none, and then I'll put another underscore and say max, and I'll say done. Now when I look at the macrocontrollers, I have controller 2, it's labeled sustain, and because of these values in back of each of the underscores, those are going to be customized text that will be added to this macrocontroller. And as I turn the controller up, the value still coming out is still going to be its normal 0 to 127. The macrocontroller will function exactly the way this one with the triangle does. Only you can see the text has more meaning for me here. And I can put up to 12 of these things in there. So if I wanted to say put a midpoint, I could add a mid in the middle and say done. When you do this, you have to go back to control panel 1. And now you can see it scales these evenly according to how many you specify in your text string. Now I will have no sustain, mid sustain, and max sustain. And I'll take that formula and perhaps I'll set it to be Z as well. Z will be the same in both primary and secondary, so Z doesn't really change between primary and secondary, only persistence does, and I can apply that now on my outputs, and if I take sustain off, maybe I'll change the timbre a bit. Now let's bring up a little of the persistence. You can hear, as I let go now, a little bit of persistence is kicking in. If I set that up to max, I can release my finger and the note sustains. So there's a simple use case using the macrocontroller as blend control. Now from here we can simply go in and look at some of the other options. For example, let's just create another macrocontroller Let's call it test for now, and let's set some other options. I can say underscore, and let's see, controller 0A option gives me dual triangles, so we'll say 0A, done. And now you can see I have my dual triangle option available that I can program in somehow, just like I did before. Here is an arc indicator, 0E. There I have a nice 
speed dial if I want to use it for that. Perhaps we want a pie slice, 0F. There's my pie slice. Let's try another one here. For example, I want an integer list. I can say 1C and then with underscores, I can have a range of integers. Let's say I want to go from 1 to 12. That's probably a common range of integers that you would use. Done. Now when I go back, I'll see I have 1 to 12 in my macro controller. Of course, I could use some other range, maybe 2 to 8. Here's one that gives you MIDI note names. If I do 1D, that could be useful. You can see this in some of the presets. So you can go through, experiment, and see how all these work. So I think you get the idea. There's quite a useful range of these little graphics that you can set now. It doesn't change how the macrocontroller actually works. It really just changes how you interpret these. By the way, if you do use something like this that has discrete values in your programming, you're going to want to programming it using some quantization so that you're only going to get out 12 values or the number of values that you want. That kind of programming, I've discussed other places in videos, uh, it's beyond the scope of what we want to do here. So that's the basics on how to use macro controllers. I hope this is helpful and I'll try to upgrade some of the other videos I've made to be consistent with the current editor functions.